Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day. Welcome to your first vision system class. So basically in this first lesson, I will explain to you regarding the structure of this coursework uh, including uh, what kind of assessment that you will undergo throughout this semester. So first thing first, uh, we give a brief overview about myself. So my name is uh, Muhammad Razali. So you can uh, contact me uh, formally via my official email address, dirazali at uthm.edu.my. So basically my uh, specialization is in the computer vision, pattern recognition and control system area. And then uh, my research interests uh, can be divided into uh, four main categories. Uh, the first one is uh, the in medical image analysis uh, and then later on in terms of the, the implementation or application of the deep learnings and then uh, the third thing is the reverse vending machine development and then uh, finally uh, in terms of the IoT application. <coughs> so if you come to UTHM, uh, you can see me in the sixth floor of uh, block Q. Uh, my room number is uh, number 29. Uh, most of our medium of the communication since for the online learning so we'll be based on the uh, whatsapp which is uh, you can contact me uh, using my number here so uh, basically uh, in terms of the uh, professionally you can contact me during uh, working hours to gain uh, immediate response uh, I will give you some sort of the ample of time to contact me during office hour up until uh, 6 p.m. So usually when you contact me, uh, not during the office hour, uh, so maybe you won't get a uh, instant feedback. So uh, it will be much more better that if you have any problem, any issues uh, regarding the academic matters or regarding your assignments or etc. and etc. So you can uh, contact me via uh, my phone numbers uh, during the working hours. So basically, uh, regarding the course content, uh, the aim of this subject is to form the comprehensive understanding about the, the concept, uh, principle and short of the vision system. And then apart from that, you will learn uh, from the practical aspect on how you're able to implement the concept that you learn during uh, this semester to the real world application. So uh, that will be part of your assignment in which you will need to develop uh, system based on the given problem statement. So it will be quite a unique problem. Everybody will uh, develop uh, the sim uh, will try to develop a system that uh, aim to solve some uh, same objective, same aim, but eventually uh, you can utilize many methods in order to solve that particular problem. So the cost structure, uh, this is the two credit uh, subjects, it means that we will have around uh, two hours per week for the lecture session. So the next part will be the explanation about what you will undergo through the semesters and then uh, the, the structure of the coursework uh, for this particular subject. So uh, basically for this uh, coursework, uh, you will have uh, many chapters. So I will try to explain the things uh, in the more simplest uh, method. So uh, in the course content, uh, in the first column, uh, this is the week that I will uh, that I will cover up uh, each of the chapters. And then the second column will be regarding the content for every week and then what type of assessment that uh, will be utilized in order to assess you for each of the chapters. So uh, basically our formatting for this semester will be uh, 7 plus 7 means that uh, we will have uh, 7 weeks, uh, first 7 weeks uh, for the first part of the lecture and then uh, we will have a semester break uh, for one week and then last one. Uh, after that, we will uh, cover up the next uh, seven weeks uh, before your final exam. So basically for week one, uh, which is uh, for this week. So in general, uh, we will cover up about the, the basic concept, uh, introduction of the computer vision, uh, what is the computer vision, what is the component involved in the computer vision, and then uh, what type of or what kind of method that can be utilized in order to solve some sort of the Computer vision, 
and then uh, eventually uh, what is the problem facing by the researchers in the computer vision area so this will be cover up in the first week and next uh, for the second week so I will cover the, the second chapter which is uh, the introduction to the cameras so uh, in this particular chapter uh, you will learn about the internal structure of the camera how camera is used in order to map a real world uh, object to the camera screen so what is the the, the process involved and then uh, how we are able to know uh, the the relationship between uh, object uh, in the camera inside of the cameras with respect to the object in the real world uh, coordinate and then how we are able to relate that thing uh, in terms of the mathematical model so this is will be your chapter 2 which is the introduction about the, the camera itself which is the important device that will be utilized uh, in order to obtain or in order to perceive information from the environment so the next part which is in uh, week 3 uh, we will cover in terms of the, the camera parameters so uh, camera parameters is the mathematical modeling so it means that uh, we have object in the uh, real world and then uh, since we have the camera we have the object in the real world so what is the mathematical model involved in order to map this uh, object uh, inside of the cameras as you can see from the image so there will be some uh, mapping process uh, from the real world to the cameras and then from the cameras to the CCD or to the white screen. So uh, this is what we call as the camera parameters. Means that uh, what is the model involved in order to project uh, object in the real world to the camera CCD. So we will learn that thing uh, in the camera parameters. And then apart from that, uh, we will learn about uh, how we can perform the camera calibration so in the computer vision application, especially in, in if you uh, design a, the, the project that involves in multiple cameras or you have a camera with uh, highly uh, distortion, highly distorted image that uh, perceive the highly distorted image. So we need to use uh, the concept of the camera calibration in order to, to know the mapping exactly uh, because of in general. Uh, the coordinate inside of the image will be based on the pixels whereas the coordinate in the real world will be uh, based on the uh, based on the uh, real unit such as centimeter meter and etc so uh, how we able to relate between the uh, real world unit inside of the cameras uh, will be uh, disclosed uh, using the camera calibration process so basically camera calibration will be utilized in order to obtain the the parameters so first we will learn about the mathematical model and then later on if we wish to obtain the parameters if we wish to recover the parameters then uh, we will use the camera calibration uh, method so there will be uh, some sort of the software involved uh, this is just a simple software that we will use that i will show to you on how you're able to uh, utilize such platform in order to recover the camera parameters so this is uh, regarding the week three so uh, the next part uh, which is uh, starting from chapter four onwards so this is uh, more on the concept of the image processing so uh weeks one uh, is introduction two to three is more on the the cameras the camera itself then let's run what is the parameters involved the mathematical model so starting from a uh, week four onward so you will learn about the more on the image processing concept in which uh by assumption that we have perceived or we have obtained the image uh from the environment using the cameras and then later on based on the obtained image or based on the obtained video so how we able to uh perform the subsequent process in order to accomplish our aim based on the given problem statement so uh, uh, starting from week four to week six, uh, which is around uh, three weeks. So we will learn the first concept of the image processing, which is based on the segmentation process. Uh, segmentation process in a simple way is how we are able to uh, distinguish between object of interest uh, and the background in, in the image. Because of usually if you uh, capture picture in the environment, uh, might be this is your object of interest 
and then uh, apart from the object of interest there will be some sort of the background uh, which is uh, we don't want that thing in the subsequent process so uh, the segmentation is the process on how we're able to highlight this area which is usually we call this thing as the foreground area and then we discard uh, this area which is we call that thing uh, we regard that thing as the background so there are many methods involved in order to solve this thing because of uh, in some condition uh, your image illumination is not uniform so for that particular case we need to utilize uh, some method in order to alleviate the effect of the illumination when you perform the segmentation process so this is uh, the, the thing that we will learn in the segmentation process uh, for the three weeks okay so now uh, the next part uh, starting week uh, 7, in week 7, uh, after we perform the segmentation, so the next part is, uh, I will cover up uh, the next chapter which is regarding the noise removal. So usually when we perform the segmentation process, uh, there will be side effect uh, as a result of that particular process. So uh, usually uh, the opt-in image will be contaminated with uh, noise. So uh, this part will explain to you how we're able to diminish su uh, such noise or let's say in some imperfection during the segmentation process so how we're able to uh, cover up that thing uh, which is uh, might be the program we need to process that thing in order to uh, diminish the hole and etc and then for the background there might be some sort of the uh, sound and paper noise so let's say this is the noise, uh, so this is our object of interest. So there may be some noise after we perform the segmentation process and then we can uh, perform, uh, we can utilize the noise removal uh, process in order to diminish this, this type of noise. And then uh, apparently uh, we're able to, let's say, fill up uh, the solid uh, of the foreground object. So this is what we will learn uh, in terms of the noise removal process. So uh, the next part, uh, which is uh, starting weeks 8 to 10, which is around 3 weeks. So for this particular case, uh, we will learn about the image features. Image features means that uh, once we perform the segmentation process, we have the foreground object of interest. Then uh, after we perform the noise removal, we might be have a quite clean image. Uh, this is, might be as a result after we perform the noise removal process. So uh, the next part is that uh, if we wish to classify this object, so we need to represent this thing in some uh, formation that can be understandable by the computer. So for this particular case, uh, let's say uh, I give you a simple example uh, for this particular object, uh, we can represent that thing in terms of the its color, in, in terms of its, its shape. So for this case, uh, it might be a circle and then uh, there will be many things. So this is what uh, you will learn in terms of the image features instead uh, you have the object of interest so how you able to represent that thing in some sort of the uh, format that can be understand better by the uh, computer and then one thing is that uh, since uh, this thing we have this object if we wish to represent that thing in terms of the let's say number maybe you can represent this thing in terms of the 23 uh, 24 and etc so uh, the value obtained here must be invariant. Invariant means that if I change the location of this object, might be uh, the object in this second location. So the meaning of the invariance means that the value will be the same. Uh, let's say if I give the value uh, for features for this value will be 23, 24. So if I change the location, since this is the same object, so it shall be obtained the same value. So there is the, the some sort of the uh, problem or some sort of the algorithm involved in the image features part in order to obtain the the uh, mathematical or some uh, parameters value from the object uh, that is quite invariant to various changes because uh, the changes uh, of this particular object can be let's say a bigger size of this object uh, and then uh, it can be uh, uh, contaminated with some noise. So how the feature extraction algorithm can be utilized in order to represent this object uh, optimally. So afterwards, uh, after weeks 10, so the next part, uh, starting from week uh, 11 to 13. 
So uh, this is some of the uh, important aspect because of this is what we call as the classification. Classification means that we have all the features and then the next part, how we able to train the computer to ensure that it will be understand that uh, it will be able to distinguish between the different type of object. So they say this is our first object, it will be our second object, and then this will be our third object. Uh, so how we able to train computer? So we, we extract all features from the object. How we able to train uh, the computer to know that this is uh, let's say triangle, this will be a rectangle, this is circle. So this is the thing that you will learn in the convolutional process. So uh, in general, uh, convolutional process involve uh, some sort of the embed, the process of the feature extraction. Uh, so in a uh, in a simple way the convolution will actually embed some sort of the image features part in this uh, structure of the model so i will explain to you in detail how it able to perform the uh, image pitch extraction inside of the convolutional neural network model so this is uh, what you will learn uh, for three weeks uh, about uh, how you how we construct the model uh, and then what is the internal uh, structure of the convolutional network that can be uh, tuning, that can be configured in order to uh, obtain optimal output with respect to the given uh, input. So uh, finally, in week 14, uh, so this is uh, our final chapter, which is chapter 8. So with 14, I will cover the, the basic concept about the stereo vision because of uh, in some sort of the application, you might be interested to obtain the 3D uh, object from the environment. So for this particular case, we can use the concept of the uh, stereo vision uh, to recover that information. Stereo vision means that uh, we will use more than one camera. So usually we obtain the camera using the single cameras. So for stereo, we might be used two or three. But uh, usually the, the 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 common cameras arrangement for the stereo vision will be based on the two cameras uh, that was arranged side by side. So that is uh, in terms of the the content of your syllabus. So basically, uh, the next part uh, for the assessment. If you look at the the right side of the column. So uh, you can see the assessment will, there will be based on the test assignment, uh, test assignment, test assignment for weeks 1 and weeks 3. And then for the weeks 4 or uh, weeks 4 and up until 6, will be assignment final exam. So uh, for this particular case means that uh, your test will be covered up up until chapter 3. So it means that 1, 2, 3 will be covered up in your test. And then the next part, which is a uh, segmentation process onward, will be covered up in your final exam. Okay, so that's in terms of your, the, 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 the chapter cover. And then uh, for the uh, assignment, assignment uh, uh, you will cover up uh, the whole chapter, starting from chapter 1 up until uh, chapter, uh, chapter 8. So it means that uh, 1, chapter 1, up until 3, 1, 2, 3 will be covered up in your test and your assignment. And then uh, chapter 4 onwards will be covered up in your final exam and also in your assignment. Uh, and then, okay, uh, the, the final part which is uh, chapter 8, chapter 8 will be covered up in your final exam. So means that uh, the celebration will not be covered up uh, in your assignment. Okay, so basically this is the, 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 the whole structures of your syllabus throughout the semesters. Uh, we have quite a lot of the chapters to be covered up. So uh, what since this is to credit subjects, so I will uh, touch not very details in each of the part. Uh, this is more on the give you some exposure about the, the concept of the, the, the foundation of the computer vision and then uh, if you understand the, the basic, the foundation, it will be quite easy for you to uh, move forward to explore more details uh, about that particular area. Okay, uh, the next part will be the cost timetable. So basically, uh, 
we have two code for this subject the first one is the BEH41902 and then the second one will be BEG34202 uh, so basically this is for the uh, the, the, the senior more senior students so this is for the uh, new student so our class will be from 8 to 10 uh, every Tuesday so this is the, the planning uh, on how I will conduct the class so basically the planning will be uh, starting from week 1 to week 13 so uh, the mod will be based on the uh, sorry it must be uh, okay so this is must be a so uh, weeks 1 to weeks 13 so it will be based on the asynchronized uh, method synchronized means that uh, I will give you I provide you with the recorded video and then uh, eventually in the end uh, you need to answer some sort of, I will give you some task you need to answer that task so that the thing will be regarded as your attendance for that particular week so uh, usually I will give you around one week so let's say uh, if I give you the video uh, today so you have around uh, more or less seven days in order to complete the task and then once you submit that thing means that I know that you uh, attend your your class session for the particular week so you have quite ample of time to complete the task uh, you can watch the video you can repeat watching the video so that uh, you, you you can answer some of the question because uh, the questions means that uh, just to ensure that you you look at the video and then you you able to find the answers inside of the uh, video and then uh, in week 14 uh, we will conduct the synchronized uh, session synchronized means that it will be uh, online face to face session uh, so because of uh, this is quite important because uh, i want to recap uh, what you have learned throughout the semesters and then in preparation for your final exam but uh, in some situation, if you think that uh, you prefer some of the topics will be cover up using the synchronous method, so uh, you just need to tell me. So uh, might be we can arrange uh, some sort of the session uh, to cover some sort of the chapter that you think uh, need this uh, this method. Okay, uh, so this will be uh, some sort of the, the cost assessment. Okay, so uh, we will have uh, the whole uh, percentage of the subject will be 100% of the assessment. So uh, for this 100%, uh, it will be divided into uh, some uh, sub portion. Okay, uh, the first portion 30% will come from your assignment and then 20% from your test you just have one test throughout the semester and then uh, for final exam will be 50% so the planning on how I conduct uh, this uh, assessment will be uh, for final exam will be the combination of the objective plus subjective and then for the test will be objective and then uh, for the assignment okay, uh, depending on the task so uh, let me cover the details of the task so basically for the assignment uh, you have 30 percent so the mark distribution will be based on uh, this form so the first one uh, 10 percent uh, will be from your reports and then five percent from your uh, presentation and then 15 percent from your project uh, demonstration so uh, for this particular case, uh, let's say if you quite confused what is the difference between the presentation and demonstration. So presentation is uh, a way that you explain the theoretical aspect of your project. So let's say uh, if your topic will be camera calibration, you need to explain uh, what is camera calibration, what is the parameter involved, and then uh, what is the, let's say, the, the theory the foundation behind the camera calibration so that is the thing that you need to cover in your presentation uh, okay apart from that for the project demonstration project demonstration means that you need to show me uh, how you configure your software what is the simulation involved how you 
uh, configure how you tune the parameters in order to ensure that you gain the you get the, the output how you get the output you need to show me the, the process so that i know that you do that thing so uh, for presentation and demonstration it is important that uh, when you record the video okay let's say for presentation this will be your your slide and everything so uh, your face will be appear uh, in your presentation so the same thing with the project demonstration so it is also important that uh, let's say this is the software that you use and then when you record that thing make sure that uh, you have your picture so that i know uh, who is the person that uh, do that part say uh, i change the format a bit for this semester so uh, let's say uh, the maximum will be three members per group uh, it can be less than that let's say you are you have two members is also okay so let's say uh, if your member is, is three so it means that you need to make sure that uh, all the members do the presentation or the demonstration so let's say uh, if you have three members maybe one member do the presentation and then other two members will do the demonstration maybe part one of the demonstration part two of the demonstration so i want to see uh, that thing for this semester means that i want to uh, to ensure that everybody contribute to, the, uh, to that uh, assignment so that uh, it can be translated into how you segregate the task for presentation demonstration etc so please make sure for this semester uh, you need to show your face the person in charge for each of the tasks this is your presentation so maybe person a uh, next demonstration first part person b and then the second part of the demonstration will be person c so there is the, the thing they want to see for this semester okay so uh, this is important because i want to make sure that all members will be involved uh, i don't want any passengers in your group so that's the thing uh, that you need to remember for this semester Okay, uh, this is the details uh, of the arrangement of the mark, the rubric that uh, will be used uh, to mark your assignment. So, uh, whenever you have the task, uh, prior doing the, the task, please make sure that you read the rubric properly. So, usually, let's say for first part, your report 10%. So, this is the kind of rubric that uh, will be used in order to vet or in order to give you mark. So uh, you just need to make sure that you have the abstract session, you have the introduction, methodology, result, etc. Blah blah blah. So uh, please make sure you have all the items cover up. Okay. Once you have all the item cover up, so maybe you have marked more than one. Okay. But if you don't have, let's say you don't have any reference, so straight away we get zero. So it is quite important that you have all the items uh, in your report. So that is quite easy for me, for me to do the marking. Okay uh so you need to put your abstract introduction etc okay uh and then later on if you have that thing then i will look at the quality of that thing so uh if your abstract is enough to cover up the, the whole story of your problem statement uh how you arrange the how you explain uh from the general to specific about the problem statement uh methodology uh how details you explain what your method and etc so this is the regarding the the first part which is the report and then uh second part uh regarding the presentation so presentation will be five percent so presentation uh you just need to make sure that you cover up all these things instead the first is the organization so your organization of the presentation must be well structured okay start with what you want to explain first then next uh, following next following next so there is in terms of the organization of your presentation second is uh, subject knowledge subject knowledge is that uh, how details you explain uh, some sort of the theory backbone uh, about your problem statement what is the method that you use how how detail you explain that thing uh, the next part will be graphics graphics means that uh, your slide must be less in word but more in the graphical illustration so that it's quite easy for me to to see the, the whole structures it's not something that you copy the copy and paste your abstract from the report uh, in your slide and then you read that thing so there is not the thing that i want i just want uh, your slide will be minimal in terms of the word but more uh, graphical uh, so it will be much more better to understand so you can explain uh, each of the the, the the graphic representation in much more detail during your presentation 
Uh, next, number four will be the eye contact. Eye contact means that please make sure that uh, when you do the presentation, because this is a recorded video, your eye will be looking straight away to the camera. Uh, I, just, I don't want you just uh, to read the slide uh, because it's quite obvious. Okay. And then uh, finally, uh, the elocution. Elocution means that uh, your voice, your voice must be clear enough. Please make sure that you you uh, you tick the echo cancellation so that uh, your voice will be quite clear for me to to listen what you want to deliver in your presentation. Okay. Uh, finally, in terms of the demonstration, demonstration you have uh, two part, so it's quite easy to mark the demonstration. Uh, demonstration in general, let's say if I give you uh, three tasks, so means that if you're able to fulfill all the three tasks, then it's okay. You get your, your marks, the full marks and everything. And then uh, finally, creativity and innovation. So means that uh, this is uh, how you, uh, let's say you add uh, some sort of the extra things in your project. So there's some sort of the, the, the creativity uh, and innovation. Maybe uh, let's say you have three tasks. And then how you 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 arrange the demonstration of the three tasks in a let's say a interesting manner. So there is one thing that uh, we give you some sort of the extra marks uh, in the assignment. So this is your uh, rubric that you that I will use uh, to mark your assignment. So you don't have to worry. In each of the assignment, I will include the rubric involved so that you can see. This is the rubric, and then uh, you should you should cover up everything inside of the rubric in order to fit the, uh, in order to ensure that uh, you know that your assignment will be uh, cover up most of the requirement in the of the problem statement. So this is regarding your assignment thirty percent. So basically, uh. In general, for this semester, you will have two assignments. So the assignment can be many things. Uh, it can be either from this topic, camera collaboration, segmentation, image en enhancement, or the convolutional network. So I will pick up uh, two topics uh, that you will use. Uh, and then uh, assignment one might be uh, a bit quite easy for you. It's something like uh, warming up. Uh, assignment two will be much more complicated. Uh, so uh, this is some sort of the preparation. So in general, for this uh, subject, uh, for the computer vision, uh, the language or uh, the programming language that you need to know, uh, first thing is the Python. Uh, second thing uh, might be MATLAB. It can be uh, Python uh, or MATLAB or Python and MATLAB. So it's up to you uh, which language that you prefer. So I don't uh, set any language that you need to use, but most of the example, uh, I will use MATLAB and Python. So we said uh, the, the basic part of the computer vision segmentation and everything, I will show that thing in using the uh, MATLAB. And then uh, starting from the neural network aspect of that thing, so I will uh, show that thing in terms of the uh, Python language. So uh, I will use the, the, the two platform. For the Python, first one is the uh, Anaconda, means that for the PC base, I will use the CPU configuration. And then second part for the GPU, I will use the, the Google Colab, which is uh, the GPU by Google. Uh, and then the language will be based on the Python. Okay, uh, when you do the submission, uh, you need to look at into the details because uh, every in every assignment, I will give you the detail what you need to submit. So let's say uh, this is the, the only information that I request from you in your report. You just need to put that thing. So it means that for this particular case, you don't have any abstract and etc. So please look uh, at, the, at the, the question, at the details of the task. And then uh, you just need to answer that thing according to what I requested. Uh, this is, let's say, a report. And then uh, it is important that if I request for you to do the presentation, you need to also include the, the slide of the presentation okay uh, the for the presentation video or the demonstration video will be based on the youtube you need to record a thing and then upload all the materials in the youtube you just need to provide me the link so it will be my uh, much more easy for you and it will be much more easy for me to monitor that thing and then finally uh, for each of the tasks that require demonstration you need to put the, the, the code what is what kind of code that you use 
uh, in order to solve that problem you can uh, uh, include the m file the, the .py file or whatever uh, whatever notation whatever representation uh, that i can ensure that uh, you do your assignment by yourself okay so this is uh, regarding the uh, assignment so we are settled up in tomorrow 30 percent of the assignment okay uh, so the next part the cost material you can assess uh, the cost material from this link uh, bit ly uh, backslash beh41902 and then uh, you can scan this QR code uh, to enter to uh, the vision system WhatsApp group. So uh, all the, the, the latest information will be uh, disseminated inside of the group. So please make sure that you join this, this group. Okay, uh, this is uh, might be the, the final part. So in general, this will be the general do and don'ts. But uh, the most important thing you need to remember that uh, for this part means that if I request for you to turn in your assignment, you need to make sure that you turn that thing uh, during the specific <coughs> time period. So this is important. So it means that if uh, late submission, you will be penalized. Uh, either your mark will be deducted or whatever. Depends on the situation. It depends on how severe that. Uh, you the, the 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 submission uh how severe is the, the late of the submission so depending on that uh, condition okay uh and then uh in general uh please make sure that you form your group okay so i give you around two weeks to form your group so please make sure that uh, you have maximum of the three members in your group okay uh and then uh less than that is okay it's quite acceptable as long as uh, you're able to cope with the given task okay and then uh it will be also important that uh punctuality you need to make sure that during your exam during your final exam you need to only do the submission you need only to submit the the materials during the given time period this is quite important because of especially for the final exam because if you submit the thing uh, beyond the given time period so there will be some sort of the problem for us and also for you uh, to do the submission later on okay finally this is the, the reference uh, so you can uh, find this book so uh, in general most of this book will cover up uh, much more foundation uh, if you wish to know the, the latest state of the art, so it usually it will be based on the, the, the general publication, it will be uh, based on the uh, group discussion, sorry, uh, the forum discussion. Uh, let's say uh, if you join the opencv.org uh, forum, so you will know what is the, the latest trend in competition. So, uh, the, but however, this particular book will be good. Uh, for you to understand the, the basic the foundation because if you have very strong foundation in computer vision it's quite easy for you to to explore in details in whatever area uh, so i think that's all uh, for our first class uh, please make sure that uh, you fill up the attendance uh, form and then uh, if you have any issue if you have any problem you can uh, whatsapp me at any time Okay, uh, and then uh, please enjoy this class up until end of this semester. So that's all. Thank you very much.